Hello, welcome back to our Hallian 6 tutorial video series. Today we're talking about envelopes. And for the purpose of today, we're going to use the amplifier envelope as our example test bed. And so we're dealing with volume here. This is what's going to happen to the volume of the sound over time. Now you can apply lots of different envelopes to lots of different stages of Hallian. But at the moment, we're just dealing with a single zone, a simple sawtooth wave that I put a little bit of filtering on and it sounds like this, you know, very simple sound. What's going on with the envelope? Let's play the note again. It travels very quickly along this line and then sticks and then when I let go, it runs down here. This is the beginning of the attack phase, our first node. And then in this example, and this is how it comes out of the box, the decay node, which is the second of the two node, uh, second of, second node of the envelope, um, is also set to zero, but it doesn't have to be. And now that I've done that, we're going to get a volume ramp when we play the key. So this is the volume increasing over time until it gets to the second of the nodes of the envelope, which signifies the end of the attack phase and the beginning of the decay phase. Now this is what's a little bit unusual about Hallian. Traditionally you'll have an attack, decay, sustain, release envelope. Attack, decay, sustain, release, that's what we've got. But in Hallian you can have any number of decay stages and any number of release stages. So I'm just going to, this um, funny looking node with two squares instead of all of the others that only have one, that is your sustain point. You can't delete that one, it's there forever. I'm just going to move it out of the way so that I can double click in this graph and create lots of decay nodes. And now when I play a note, it still sticks at the sustain node and then goes through into the release phase. I'm just going to show you a little zoom trick here, just click A and it'll show you the whole wave, that's all. And similarly, we can have any number of release stages. Now when I let go of the key, we go through the release stage. All of that is sustain mode. An attack phase, a multi-stage decay phase, a sustain phase, and then a multi-stage release phase. In loop mode, we get the ability to define a region, a zone, over which the note will repeat again and again and again. Now, when I was setting this example up, I hadn't noticed that I've inadvertently set my loop zone to zero, but this is it here. If you pick up either side of this line and drag, then you can specify the boundary of your loop zone. So now when I play a key, cycles in between that zone. You can't extend beyond the attack phase, so it won't let me drag past that second node because that's the end of the attack phase, and you can't set your loop zone past your sustain node either, so that's as far to the right as I can go. But other than that, we're free to set the zone as big or as small as we want. In one shot mode, it makes it appear that the sustain node has disappeared. But there it is. And Hallian remembers that that's the sustain node. It's just disabled for now because in one shot mode, it goes straight through it and plays the whole thing in one go. Now, the reason why I mentioned that it was significant that the, the sustain node was still there is because all these other nodes can be deleted by double clicking them. But if I double click the sustain node, I can't get rid of it. I can't get rid of the first node. I can't get rid of the last node, but I can get rid of anything else in between. Okay. 
The next option along says scale rel and when we hover over it it says scale levels of release nodes with level at note off. What the hell does that mean? What happens if we have a long evolving attack and decay phase up to the sustain point? And then once we've got here, after the sustain point, we hold that level, maximum level, for a period of time before uh, releasing the note. Well, that's all very well and good if we play to the point where we get to the sustain node and everything sounds fine. But if I let go of this key before I get to this higher volume, we get a sudden jump in volume because it always, Halion always jumps to the sustain point and then plays the whole of the release phase and you get that horrible volume jump. Well, if we say scale the release nodes with the level at note off, it says whatever the velocity is, sorry, whatever the volume is at the point when the note is released, then scale the entire release phase down so that it sounds sensible. And now the release phase is much quieter. And if I hardly make any sound, then we hardly get any release sound either. Sync is pretty obvious. It syncs to the host tempo. So now the divisions in time are no longer millisecond based. They're tempo based so we can figure out how long the envelope is in relation to the, the, the structure of the song behind. Snap to guide envelope allows us to underlay one of the other envelopes so if I choose filter whatever the filter envelope looks like which is sawtooth gets underlaid and so we can change the amplifier envelope to match or to be sympathetic in some way. It's purely a visual aid. We can't do anything with this envelope. We can't edit it in any way. It's just a visual guide. But it does allow us when snap is on, if we had multiple nodes in this filter, then we can snap to them. Fill, whichever node you currently have selected, you can choose this many nodes and it will simply, when you click the button, create that many extra steps in your envelope and then you can edit them as required. So let's see what that sounds like so far. Okay, it's a pretty long release cycle. Let's get rid of some of these. Fixed affects how the envelope on either side is uh, is affected and it's much easier to show you than try to explain it. If I pick this node up, can you see everything after the node is moving along with it. If I engage fixed, then just that node moves and everything to the right of it is stuck. So we can only move to the left or right up to the, the limits specified by the other nodes on each side. This is where we can select each of the nodes. You can see it get highlighted. If we change this time value, then the graph will be updated to reflect. I can type in it. I can reset the curve and then, so you can see the curve is zero because that's the selected node. If I select this one up here, then we've got a curve of 5.1 and I can change that up to plus 10 or minus 10 different shapes of curve. You can pick these things up and edit the curve visually. You can set the level of the node by clicking up or down in the level or just typing explicitly. It's a really very flexible graphical editor. You can make it bigger and smaller. Okay, let's have a look at the list of options down below. 
So this level velocity curve defaults to linear and you very rarely need anything other than linear, but these are different um, algorithms, different shapes of curve that can be applied to the level velocity um, control here. So positive values increase the level of the envelope um, the harder you hit a key. If we set it to zero. That's default. Doesn't matter how hard I hit the key, it's always generating the same envelope. There's no velocity sensitivity on the keyboard. At 100%, it perfectly maps to my keyboard velocity. So if I play a soft note, we get a soft sound. If I play a hard note, we get a as expected, a louder note. So it's all about how sensitive the envelope is to how hard you hit the key. Time velocity is linked to this control over here. Let's uh, let's have a bit of a mess around with it and see what it does. So if I set this up and we have just attack at the moment, the segment is set to attack. When I hit a key, this section here up to the first node is faster than the rest of the envelope, which travels to regular speed. If I bring it all the way down, it's really slow on the attack phase and then it catches up and is normal speed. If I set to attack and decay, we're going to get this really slow movement all the way up to the sustain node. And then when I let go, let go of the key, it will be at regular speed. We can have that on the attack and release only really slow, normal, really slow. And now because I've got quite a long release curve, it's going to take ages. And then the entire curve, I, I won't bore you with that. It's pretty obvious what that's going to do. So if I set this nice and fast, the whole curve, the, the whole envelope will play quickly. All these settings down here, uh, all the key follow settings are about how fast the envelope plays. So uh, time key follow is everything up to the sustain node and at zero it's the same across the entire keyboard. Every key that you play always travels at the same speed. We're just worried about everything up to the sustain node here. Playing a C3 here travels at that speed, C6 up here travels at the same speed. If I start increasing this speed now notes higher than C3 will, will get to that point faster and notes below C3 will get there slower. If I go into minus figures, it's the other way around. The low notes will now get there quickly and the high notes will get there slowly. Set that back. This is the, the point around which the key follow pivots, set to C3, it's pretty straightforward. And uh, time key follow release is the same thing, but everything after the sustain node. So now if I make this faster, when I release this C5 that I just played, it travels very quickly. Um, when I release this C1 that I just played, it travels very slowly. So that's an introduction to the envelope section. Everything that we've dealt with has obviously just been about volume, but in later videos, we'll see that you can apply envelopes to uh, the filter uh, settings and to your pitch as well. And then we have a fourth envelope, uh, the user envelope, which is completely freely configurable and is just a shape that we can draw however we want. And we'll use that when we get to deal with modulation matrix. That's pretty cool as well. So hopefully you found that useful. I'll see you for the next video. Thanks very much for watching.